Hey, welcome to Think Creative TV. I'm Matt Pullen, and this is our place to share all about how to use your iPad creatively in your classrooms. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, and then you'll be kept up to date on everything that we release. Now let's get stuck into today's video. So let's take a look at how we can use Apple Classroom with our students and how we can get set up. First of all, let's go into Apple Classroom on our teacher device. Now, the simple thing we need to do here is tap plus to start a new class. Give it the name of your classroom. You can give it a description as well so it's easier for you to find on the screen. There's also different icons that you can choose from and different colors. It's completely up to you how you want to do this. Some people might find it easy to put colors for certain groups. Then we go into the class and we need to invite students. It brings up a code, and then on the right-hand side, you can see what the student needs to do on their device. First of all, they tap on settings. You'll see classroom appears as a new setting underneath Bluetooth, and then they go in and they join that class that we've just created, that one that's blue at the top. They add in that code onto their screen, which means that they'll then be able to join my class. Now, you can change the name depending on how the setups are on your device. This is obviously my personal device, so it's already filled in for me, but students can add in their own names as well. Once that's done, you'll see on the left-hand side now, a student's in my class, and now I have access to their device. They've given me that control. So let's take a look at some of the things across the top that we can work on. First of all, I can open apps on their device, which speeds up the process. So if I tap on Keynote here, you'll see that on the student device, it's instantly opened up that app on their device. And I can easily hide those by just tapping on hide. So again, tap on an app, which is the one you want to open for them. It will open it on their device. Really, really simple. Tap done, and then obviously the student's got the device you can carry on with teaching. Now let's imagine that we want to lock those students in that app. It could be that you don't want them to get confused by accidentally pushing the home button and losing their focus. At the bottom here, I can also turn on the tap that says lock into app. So once I turn this on, if I then go back into any of those apps and open them up, let's choose notes again. Now this time it's going to offer them the option to say can I or can't I, that's just a security setting that Apple do. Yes, we, the students are going to want to do this, okay, because if they don't, we know who they are. And now when it opens up that app on their device, they can't get out of that without me freeing up their device. It's, it looks like it's Big Brother, believe me, for lots of students they accidentally push uh, the button, they lose the app and then it takes them a while to get back into it. Now we can do exactly the same thing if we're looking at how we can get them to websites. Now lots of schools do this via QR codes or, or sending things out, but it can be quite time consuming, both in creating those QR codes, but also in getting the students to know where to do them. So by opening up a navigation, I can again go to Safari. I can open other things as well, but we're just gonna demo this through Safari. And once I open Safari within Classroom, it's gonna take me to my bookmark. So there's a bit of, you know, preparation that work needs to go here. I create these bookmarks in advance. Now let's imagine that I'm teaching my students about science in the session. I want them to go to a specific science website. I've got this in my bookmarks already. So I tap on that and it instantly opens that on their device. Turns out that this website no longer exists. So I'm gonna to need to check on that for myself. Let's go through that again. So tap on Safari. This time I'm gonna to go to about something that everyone loves, data protection instantly opens that on the student's device. Students then have access to be able to read through those things or whatever it is we're doing with it. And again, tap on hide, goes back a step. Now, the next thing that's really useful is being able to lock student devices. Again, it can look like control, but actually when students are working really hard on something and I wanna give them some input, just by locking their device means on their screen, they see that it locks, they look up, they get the instruction from me as the teacher. Instantly, you know, we can move on to the next step. And again, easily unlock in the same method. And again, this tab here, you can use the same. It's, it's mute, it just means it will silence their devices. Now let's look at something which has a real impact in the classroom from assessment for learning, and that's screens. Again, it's gonna ask the students to give permission the first time, but once that's done, you'll see here, I can see their screen. I have the same controls as before, but individually for each student, so if I wanna set individual help. But what I also have is the ability to see their screen. So now on the left-hand side, I can see exactly what is on the student's screen. And you'll see how that quickly mirrors from what they're doing to what I can see. So let's say that I'm gonna get them to open up a keynote presentation and I want them to create some work. You'll see that on my screen as the teacher, I can follow through what they're doing. 
This means that if any point I notice a student is struggling with something, I can quickly intervene without them having to highlight, without them having to put their hands up and the embarrassment that that might cause them. I can notice that there might be something wrong, but equally I can see that they're doing something fantastic and share that to the rest of the class as well. So a really, really useful assessment for learning tip. Now when the work's done, the student might want to share it back to me. One way they can do this is via AirDrop. You'll notice here that my class is also set up now. So once they tap on my face and my name, it shows up on my screen as students have shared something with me. I can tap on that and I can see that document that's been shared with me. Now you might have other methods of doing this, but if a quick share back to the teacher to get them to check something, this is a really, really easy way to do it. I can also create groups and I can also invite additional students at any point that I might need to. Okay, great, so let's end this class and take a look at what other things we get through Classroom. You'll see that on my screen now, I have all the apps that have been used in this session, also the work that's been submitted, and the students that are part of the class. I can tap on any one of those apps and I get a bit of data about when they were used, where they were used. I can tap on the student and have a look at when they use certain apps throughout the session. And when I tap leave, all of that data is gone. Now it's really important to highlight that because this isn't about collecting data. This is about a snapshot of getting an understanding of what the students have done in the lesson, what apps they might have used, and how we can use Classroom to just better support our classroom practice.